Hey everybody, in today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can calculate moving averages in Excel. I'm gonna go over how to calculate a simple moving average as well as an exponential moving average. And I'm also gonna compare and contrast the two to see when you may wanna use one versus another. In this example, I'm using Bitcoin's price and I'm gonna calculate those averages to identify any trends, any patterns, and show you the differences in using a simple average versus an exponential one. So for starters, I'm gonna calculate a 20 day moving average and also a 50 day moving average. So to calculate a moving average is no different than just your regular average. The key thing is you want 20 data points in a 20 day moving average, 50 data points in a 50 day moving average, and you always want it to move. So if I go down here to row 21 and just select an average an average function and select the last 20 data points, I've got my average. Now you might be tempted to freeze cells before copying them over, but in the case of moving average, you don't wanna do that. Instead, I'm just gonna double click here on this crosshairs to copy these formulas down. And now you'll see that my average is indeed moving. It's always gonna grab the most recent 20 data points, which is what you want in a 20 day moving average. For a 50 day moving average, I'm gonna do the exact same thing, except I'm gonna start at row 51. And now do the same thing. Use the average function and go back to row two, all the way to 51. Now I've got my move, my 50 day moving average. So, so here I got my 20 day moving average and this is my 50 day moving average. So right away we can see that the 20 day moving average is higher than the than the 50 day moving average. So that's a bullish indicator to say that the price has been trending upward. Now I'll plot this on a chart in a little bit here. But now let's go, go and calculate a 20 day exponential moving average and also a 50 day exponential moving average. So initially, the first data point anyways, will be the same for a 20 day moving average as it is for a 50 day moving average. And that's because, because I'm actually only going to, um, I have to start with, with a simple moving average to start just because I don't have anything before to rely on to, to do this calculation. Now, when I'm doing a 20 day moving average or uh, sorry, an exponential moving average, I need to apply a multiplier. So it's gonna be two divide out by the number of periods. So I've got 20 periods in this case, plus one. So that's my multiplier. And so this is gonna be important in my calculation because what I'm doing is I'm applying that multiplier to, to, the, to the change in price because I wanna determine, because uh, I wanna add some weight to the recent price movement. So I'm gonna put this all in parentheses just to make it make it more isolated here and multiply this by the change in the current price versus the previous exponential moving average. I'm gonna put all this in parentheses as well just so it's nice and clean. And then what I'm also gonna do is add back the previous exponential moving average. So again, I did not have a pre previous amount here. That's why I had to start with that simple moving average. So we have that multiplier. We're multiplying it by the change, this price versus the previous exponential moving average. So we're applying a weighting to that change and we're adding that on top of the previous exponential moving average. So now if I copy it down, now I can copy this down as well. So it's not gonna automatically detect it. it doesn't have the pattern. There we go. Now we've got all the way down. So we've got our exponential moving average. So this is the 20 day simple, the 20 day exponential. So you can see, see subtle differences here. Uh, this one's a bit higher and that's indicative of the fact that you know B Bitcoin's price has been um, increasing sharply. So the exponential moving average, because it's adding that, that recent weighting to it, is gonna, is gonna be higher than just the simple moving average. And on the flip side, if the price was going down, then the exponential moving average would decline faster than the simple moving average. So let's also do this for the 50 day moving average. So again, I'm gonna copy this formula for the 50 day moving average. 
do the same thing. Now my weighting is going to be a little bit different. So here, and actually I can just copy this over as well. So what I'm going to do here is, is instead of a factor of 20, I'm going to change this to a factor of 50 because I've got 50 data points. So 50 divided by 1 is my weighting. So 2 divided by 50 plus 1. And then we're going to take the current price, subtract the previous exponential moving average, and then add that exponential moving average um, as well. So now I've got that. And now let's copy this all the way down as well. And so here we've got the 50 day exponential moving average. This is the 50 day simple moving average. So you can see there's a bit more of a gap between those just because a 50 day moving average is a fairly long stretch. And what I'll do here is to make this easier to see, I'll freeze freeze my panes at the top just so it's a bit more clear. So we've got the 50 day moving average, the 50 day exponential. So more of a gap than there is between the 20 day averages just because the 20 day averages are, also, are, are, are fairly short in their intervals compared to the 50 days. So there will be more of a difference when you're looking at a longer range than at a, at a shorter duration. And to help visualize these, these data points, now I'm gonna put them on a chart. So I'm gonna to go to the insert tab and a line chart works best for, the, for this. And so I'm gonna right click, select data. So I don't want I don't want the, I'm gonna uncheck the price. I'm just gonna leave the moving averages here. And I just want the recent data points going from row 400, because I've got 457. So as you can see, it's hard to see these, these changes. And I'm just gonna edit these series. So series one, we've got column B, that is the, the price. Series two relates to column C. This is the 50 day moving average. 20 day exponential. And then the last one is going to be the 50 day exponential moving average. So now I've got that. So we've got recent data points. And what I'm also going to do here is modify these ranges modify this axis. So starting from a value of, let's say around 40,000. And let's set the high at about 65,000, just so it doesn't, just so it's a bit more compact here. So now we can see, you know, the changes a bit more, um, more easily. I'm gonna change this again, right click, select data. I'm gonna get rid of the price and let's just compare the moving averages for now. So we've got the moving averages, and so we can see the 20-day moving average, fairly smooth. Same with the 50-day moving average. The 50-day, because it's a longer-term average, it's not going to spike significantly to change. It's going to take a while to get that average up, whereas the 20-day moving average crosses, moves, moves more rapidly. And so these are a couple of crossovers. So the 20-day moving, moving average dipped below the 50 days so as a bearish indicator as a bad sign that the st that uh, that the price is going down but here it crosses high so that's a bullish indicator saying the price movement has been um, picking up momentum it's been rising higher and that now that gap has been increasing so it's far higher now than the 50 day moving average now let's compare this let's compare 20 day moving averages the 20 day moving average against the 20 day exponential moving average and now here they're, they're fairly similar um, again those gaps weren't that big to begin with just because we're looking at fairly short time frames to begin with but we can see the exponential moving average the blue one it rose above that simple moving average already at, at this point so there was a bit of a crossover to suggest that okay there's been some recent price movement so this has been pushing that up higher than this one, you can see at this point, you know, it took a while for this orange line to catch up to that. So it took multiple days. It's still, still trended up, but took a bit longer for it to do so. Now let's uh, look at the 50 day moving average against the 50 day exponential. And this is where we'll see a bit more of a change just because 
you know, here we're looking at a long run average, 50 days, right? So this this green line, this is the simple moving average. It's it's going to take a while for this one to increase. Whereas this one, the 50 day exponential moving average, because it has that weighting applied to the more recent price movements, it's going to it's going to spike a lot sooner than that green line. So as as you can see, that gap is is pretty significant right now between those two. So it could take a while for this to catch up. Whereas this exponential moving average has already started to spike significantly because of the recent um, trade movement. So as you can see, depending on the time frame you're looking at, um, the exponential moving average can vary significantly from the simple moving average. So if so if you're if you're a trader and you're looking at short term trends, you may may value the exponential moving average more than just the simple moving average. Whereas if you're looking at long term trends, you want to eliminate some of that noise. You don't want you don't care about recent price movements, then possibly the simple moving average might be a better option for you. So that's how you can calculate both the exponential and the simple moving average in Excel. If you like this video, please leave a like and be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.